tolerance is at best a two-edged sword. To be forgiving is a source of peace, but the desire for peace is potentially suicidal if we seek peace at any cost. An idea or concept that has merit and virtue in one situation may represent the greatest of evils in a different context. What virtue is there in forgiving a loan made to a gambler or drug addict? But too many Christians equate giving aid to someone who lost everything through no fault of their own, to being tolerant of criminals and the crimes that commit against others. No one deserves our help. There are no innocent victims. No one is entitled to what we have. They did not obtain a right to what we have by failing to live right. Christians do not get to avoid the need for stewardship by assuming everyone is a victim. That is not how it works. No one enjoys being told they are wrong, but it has to be said, hiding behind a curtain of good works does not absolve you of your responsibilities to join in the war against evil. You cannot put your empathy above morality. We owe a debt to God and the Christian community. This debt is not being repaid if we live according to your accounting. Our debt to God is not paid when we say we have paid it nor by doing what we wish to do, to make things right. Tolerance of evil does not sanctify it or make saintly those who engage in it. Tolerance is not about being good or being Christian, it is about being as God. Tolerance for evil is about us cancelling the demands of God in accordance with our feelings. Tolerance is man forgiving sins because we think God's laws are too harsh. What puts us in the high seat of God more than our willingness to tolerate evil? God does not forgive the killers of children, but liberal Christians do, and indeed many applaud it and see it as an exercise of liberation. Abortion is just another instance of man flaunting the commands of God. The evil man does and tolerates is one thing but the tolerance of the church for evil is another. If good and evil are relative terms, then tolerance would be expected. If there is no line between good and evil, then there would be a good reason for getting them confused. Is the relativity of good and evil referenced in the verses telling us we are all sinners in need of grace? But the better way to ask the question is, if the evil we do deserving of tolerance, because the two questions are not equivalent to each other. Sin is an activity that harms oneself. Homosexuality and drunkenness do impact other people, but sin is basically actions that self-harm. Evil harms others. The sinner needs time and space to work through his weakness. Evil is generally a chronic condition. If we repent of our sin we are forgiven by God because it betrays a broken heart struggling to improve the person in the mirror. But we are not all evil though we are all sinners. We as sinners need to love our enemies and forgive those who trespass against us, but not in a way that defends and perpetuates evil. We forgive sin when it impacts us because it is something the other person struggles with. We do not forgive Satan for the evil he does as the enemy of God. We forgive our enemies for what they did to us because of their sin, not God's enemies for what they do to God. Even a person of low intelligence ought to understand a chronic thief ought not be forgiven and in fact cannot be as he is an ongoing sin. The unrepentant do not feel a need for forgiveness and so do not accept it. To forgive those who do not think they need it is hypocritical and disrespectful. If I preach to you a gospel you object to but forgive me, what does that say about you? Do I wish to be forgiven for doing something I believe is holy and just? Do you forgive me for doing wrong which encourages me to continue doing what I was doing? Are you simply trying to look virtuous at any cost? What does your tolerance achieve other than to give you a sense of moral superiority? What of the court that sentences a priest to jail for sodomy? Does the priest then forgive the court for sending him to jail? A wrong has to be done that is then repented for forgiveness to be offered by the one wronged. We do not forgive someone for a wrong done to others. If we put forgiveness in the context of the church and its purpose, when we forgive an evildoer, we are in effect binding the evildoer to the church and therefore to heaven. 
the tolerant Christian when she forgives the unrepentant gives the evildoer access to heaven though they still reject Christ and his church. This is ungodly and evil and not permitted. But of course, the ones who do this are not part of God's church and their tolerance is worthless, and their prayers fall dead at their feet. But it seems too many Christians find it easier to forgive evil and offend God, than to judge evil and condemn it never mind condemning those who are evil and removing them from the church. Apathy is hidden under a veil of tolerance. The truth is we do not wish to deal with our own sin, so we tolerate the sins of others. Do we think our tolerance of the sins of others will ensure our own sins are similarly tolerated by God? This is not what Scripture says. The Bible asks us how our sins will be forgiven if we condemn others. It does not say if we forgive others for the sins they do consistently, we will likewise be forgiven for refusing to give up our sins. In other words the level of God's forgiveness is not determined by our level of tolerance for the sins of others. However, there is another sense in which condemnation is used. If we forgive people for the unforgivable sin or the sin that is unrepentant, how can they be forgiven? If we chose to forgive that which is unforgivable, the unrepentant sin, we are condemning them in their unrepentant state. We have to put this in the context of the church. The church is an organization created to bring people to God. But the sinner cannot come to God. The church cannot bind people to itself when those people they attempt to bind reject the church. Our sins need to be hidden in Christ and this is done in and through the church. It is us as the church that creates the faith that hides our sin from the eyes of God. We are not sinless or perfect as individuals. It is our membership in the body of Christ that perfects us. But what happens if we permit wolves in sheep's clothing to enter in among us? Unrepentance is like the leaven put in three measures of flour. What is love if we permit what we love to be compromised by those who hate us? How do we build the church if it is compromised by those who live to tear it down? The church cannot be the perfect bride of Christ with unrepentant sinners treated as if they were Christians. Tolerance is never a good thing. Either the person repents and is welcomed back to the ones harmed, or he does not repent and has separated themselves from the church. Far be it for us to forgive them for doing what they think is right. In their sin a person rejects God. All the tolerance in the world will not change this fact. If the person steals a cookie and the theft is tolerated, how long before the cookie turns into a something bigger? At what point does the tolerance end as end it must? The church must exercise the binding process as laid out in Scripture, Matt 18,15-20. These are the steps laid out for dealing with behavioral breaches by the church. The process culminates in one of two alternative outcomes. The accused is bound to the church by the process or cast out at the end of it. There is no third way or partial solutions. Equivocation is not permitted. One is in the body or out of fellowship. The one accused has to make a real choice. There is no tolerance in the church for those who sit on the fence. But in the liberal church tolerance is preached, there is little binding and a lot of fence sitting. Because so few are bound, many leave the liberal church and fall by the wayside. The church must institute the process laid out in Scripture for substantiating claims of faith. Liberalization, which is a corollary for tolerance, must be defeated and eradicated from the church, all Christian bodies and church procedures. We need a cleansing of the church to remove all liberal contaminants.